When you start learning the Arabic language, it'd be a really good idea to have some vocabulary and expressions that are useful for the Arabic classroom. In fact, there are a number of Arabic curriculums that have been designed with this in mind from the very beginning. For example, the Medina book series, they begin with the first lesson saying things like هذا كتاب this is a book, هذا قلم this is a pen. And doing this because in that classroom, of course, there's students from all over the world who don't share a common language. So they use the Arabic language with words for things in the classroom to teach it. So what I would like to do today, inshallah, is go over maybe 30 new words and phrases for you for very useful words to use in the classroom, inshallah. So to begin, when you come into the classroom, it's even common in the Arabic speaking world to have a register, even at university level, where they will go through the register and ask who's here and who's not. And when they say your name, you say hadir, hadir, meaning present, or ghaib, if someone's not present. And obviously the feminine version would be hadira, if, it's a, if you're a girl, or ghaiba, if it's a girl's name, hadir, or ghaib. So I'm going to go through a number of verbs. Um, first of all, actually, we'll, we'll talk through them in turn, and I'll give you some examples of expressions you could use um, each one for. So, because um, there's a few uh, interesting and useful verbs to use, um, do with studying and learning, and um, you know, and I'll talk about the nuances between them, and then some of the words to do with knowledge that all come from the same root. That it's important to know the difference between. So the first verb that I want to talk about is the verb to study. So we use the verb darasa, okay, darasa. They're just those three letters, darasa, he studied. So I study adrusu, adrusu arabiya I'm, I'm studying Arabic, or adrusu l'inglizia, I'm studying English, or adrusu fil jami'a, I'm studying in the university. For example, okay, adrusu, you could ask somebody, ماذا تدرسو هنا? What, what do you study here? ماذا تدرسو fil jami'a? What, what do you study in the university? Um, أنا درست العربية في جامعة النجاح. For example, I studied Arabic at um, جامعة النجاح, which is in the دفة الغربية, the West Bank in Palestine. For example, so the verb درس to study. So what about to learn something? Because there's a difference between those things, right? Like learning, we use the verb in Arabic تعلم, which is a form five verb. أنا أتعلم, I am learning. أنا أتعلم الهندسة. I'm learning engineering, for example. أو أنا تعلمت كثيرا في هذا الدرس. I learned a lot in this lesson. أنا تعلمت كثيرا. So the verb تعلم, meaning to learn. Or أنا أتعلم, I learn. How about when you're learning a lot and you improve? We use the verb تحسن. أنا أتحسن. أريد أن أتحسن. I want to improve. The verb تحسن, to improve in something. أنا تح أنا تحسنت. I تحسنتو كثيرا I improved a lot or the verb to practice um, there's the verb مارسة which is very useful actually أريد أن أمارس عربيتي I want to practice my Arabic مارسة which is a form 3 verb مارسة يمارس in the present tense who are you مارس he is practicing and you can use the verb مارسة with anything you know اليوم أريد أن أمارس today I want to practice كرة القدم. I want to practice football. You can use it with anything, right? You can use it really with whether you're practicing sports or languages or any other type of skill. So the verb مارسة is very useful too. How about to try? Sometimes your teacher might try to encourage you um, to doing something. We use the verb حاول to try as in to attempt something. أنا أحاول. I will try. أنا أحاول. I will try. Or the, or the imperative would be حاول, try, حاول. Or to a woman it would be حاولي, try, try um, in, in the imperative حاول. But it's important to understand the difference between the verb حاولة, to try as in to attempt something, or the verb جربة, meaning to try as in to taste something. Because in English we use the verb try for both of them. Like in a restaurant, if you're saying to somebody, try it, in Arabic you'd say جرب, جرب. But if you're telling someone to try as in to attempt something, it's the verb حاول, حاول. Yeah, to try. Anna or how will sofa or how will I will I will try. Uh, there's also a verb to exercise something. The verb marrana, you marrino to exercise. But I think this word is most useful in its mustar actually, um, because you see the word temrin and exercise in like your workbooks, your textbooks, um, for learning the Arabic language. So a temrin is an exercise. Temrinet in the plural are exercises. You see that word in um. In Arabic language to textbooks when you have exercises to 
to practice certain things. How about, um, you, you might want to ask your teacher to explain something. So typically you can use the verb um, sharaha, mumkin tashrah, mumkin tashrah hadha. Can you explain this? Or, um, you know, mumkin tashrah hadhihi al-ibara. Can you explain this phrase? Or, mumkin tashrah hadha marra thaniya, for example. Can you explain this a second time? Or, bi kulli al-harakat, with all of the harakat. Hal min al-mumkin an tashraha? هذا مرة ثانية. Can you explain this? مرة ثانية. Can you explain this another time? So saying again might be might be useful. مرة ثانية without the حركات or مرة ثانية تن with 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 the حركات. So ممكن ممكن تقول ذلك مرة ثانية. Can you say that again? Yeah, مرة ثانية. This is very useful. Okay, how about, um, so we talked about some verbs and some other kind of little useful things you might say in the classroom. How about, um, like, your kind of classroom items? I mentioned saying things like, um, هذا قلمي or هذا كتابي or, you know, that this is my pen or this is my book. But, um, you know, when you have something in the classroom, you're most likely to use the word ما to mean that you have something. So... Um, there's lots of words to say to have in Arabic. Sometimes you hear ind, sometimes lada, lada or ladaika for you. Sometimes leka you have, or sometimes maaka. And in the classroom, for things that you've got with you at that time, or if your teacher asks you, you know, hel maaka al qalam, do you have the pen with you? Or hel maaka kitabak or kitabuk, do you have your book with you? You're most likely to use ma, I think, with things in the classroom because, I mean, ma literally means with. And it's kind of like in English when you ask somebody, like, have you got your keys? It's, it's That's the type of have that it is. It, it doesn't mean that you have something that's sort of inherent about you or, or you have something that couldn't be taken away. Like, let's say, for example, you have arms or you have eyes or you have children, for example. And you might use it, you'd use another type of um, have for that. But in the classroom, I think you're most likely for your teacher to say, in a fusha class anyway, هل معك الكتاب? If you've got the book with you, هل معك قلمك? You know, is the book with you? Literally, is what you're saying. So you might say, نعم معي قلمي. نعم معي كتابي. نعم معي دفتري. ما معنى دفتر? What does دفتر mean? ما معنى is a really useful expression as well for the classroom, of course. ما معنى ذلك? Well, what does that mean? ما معنى ذلك? Another phrase. I didn't plan this one, but. In classes where you're having debates, um, I found the expression lem akul dhalik to be very useful. Lem akul dhalik. I didn't say that. Lem akul dhalik. You know, quite often when you're having debates about things, people um, make assumptions about what you said, or they or they might they might t- put a twist on something that you said and come up with something that's actually a different point. And you might want to say lem akul dhalik. I didn't say that. أو لم أقصد ذلك. I didn't mean that. Um, yeah, قصد is a useful word for your what you meant. Um, or, or in Palestine, I remember hearing people say, um, uh, مش قصدي. It's not my قصد. They like I don't know in, in dialects in our media generally. It, I think it's quite common for people to say قصدي rather than say أقصد. You know, but in in Fusha, I think the verb is sort of uh, preferred really. لم أقصد. I didn't mean لم أقصد ذلك. I didn't mean that. For example, but um, but anyway, so I'll come back to some kind of classroom items that are useful. So, we talked about a kitab, a book, of course, but there's different types of books you get a classroom. Um, and I actually think if you're in the UK and you're thinking of like GCSE and A level Arabic, one of the steps from sort of GCSE Arabic up to A level Arabic is knowing more, nu- having more nuance in your vocabulary. So rather than just knowing the word kitab for a book, knowing a kitab, a book, riwaya, a novel. Qamus, a dictionary. Kutayyib, a booklet. A daftar, a notepad. Um, so, yeah, knowing kind of that, that nuance and some of those different words for some of those useful classroom items. Um, oh, I did mention the plurals of those. So, a book, kitab, or the plural kutub. Daftar, a notebook. Or the plural, probably dafatir. Um, I didn't double check that, but that sounds right. Dafatir. A novel, riwayatun, or the plural, riwayat. Riwayat, Palestinian, Palestinian novels, for example. A booklet, kutayyib, probably the plural, kutayyibat. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that one. I don't, I'm not sure how else we would make a plural of a 
of a tasghir like that. I may be wrong. Um, there may be maybe another pattern that we use for it. I'm trying to think of other ones like um, um, kulayb and um, khurair um, or khuraira. Um, yeah, but in any case, we'll, we'll carry on. Qamus, of course, qawamis. A uh, interesting fact about qamus, actually. Um, a qamus originally actually meant an ocean. A qamus. Um, yeah, until the dictionary, I believe, qamus and muhid. Um, the, the expansive qamus, the expansive ocean, is, um, yeah, is, is the name of a, a well known Arabic to Arabic dictionary. But kind of from the, that dictionary, the word qamus ended up not meaning an ocean anymore and meaning a dictionary. But after the name of that book, its original meaning was an ocean, but it's come to mean a dictionary. Of course, oceans are much older than dictionaries. Um, so it makes sense that a word for an ocean existed before. And even now in Arabic, they use the word muhit to mean an ocean. But the word muhit means like all encompassing, an encompassing. Um, yeah, so what al qamus al muhit meant was the all encompassing ocean, right? But because of the name of the dictionary, the word qamus has come to mean a dictionary. And muhit has come to mean an ocean, which is, which is kind of interesting. But um, the word muhit is used in the Quran many times. Um, yeah, to, to mean all encompassing. Muhit. Yes. Anyway, a little bit of a um, digression on the word qamus. But plural, qawamis. Qalam, the pen. Yeah, there's other words for pen actually that might be useful. Qalam rasas. Qalam rasas without the L. Qalam rasas is a pencil. Qalam rasas. Yeah, qalam rasas for a pencil. Qalam, qalam as sabura, the, the board pen. Um, what else? Yeah, so the, so the sabura is the, the board. Use it for like a whiteboard or whatever as well. Very nice. Um, how about the teacher? Um, so there's a few different words for teacher actually for us to go through. A lot of students ask me this question about what the difference is. Um, of course, we have a mudarris. The mudarris. The person who does darrasa, the person who does the teaching. Um, which is a verb, actually, I don't believe I mentioned earlier, actually. Darrasa yudarrisu, to, to teach. But then we also have a synonym of that, alama yu'allimu. And I think we come to understand the differences between those words when we think about the form ones of them. So um, so the verb alima means to know. So alama is to make someone know. Darrasa means to study. So darrasa means to make someone study. Right. So a mudarris doesn't necessarily make someone know anything. They just make them study. Technically, right, for, from that perspective. Um, I'm not saying that's what it means now. I'm not saying that a modernist doesn't really make people know things. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, you know, from the very definitions of the form ones that we're drawing out to try to get some nuance to them. Because there is nuance in some other words that I think is accurate. Like, let, let's say, for example, if we go to the mustard, um, we go to like ta'alim and tedris. Tedris is, is teaching. Right, just just teaching, just the, the making of people study, right? The t teaching, whereas the ta'alim is education in general, um, and there's a difference between those two things, of course. Ta'alim and tadris. Ta'alim, as I say, education in more in more general terms, but tadris is specifically the skill of teaching. Tadris. Anyway, so uh, so the teacher, the mudarris or the muallim. There's also the word ustad, isn't there as well? Ustad. Yes, ustad. Assertive, I believe is a proof of Ustad that sounds right. Ustad, Assertive, Mudarris, Mudarrisun, Muallim, Muallimun. How about the difference between them? Ustad is kind of like a title, actually, as well. Ustad Sam, we say for like me, me at the Arabic Conlock Academy. Um, Ustad Sam, Ustad Asad, um, you know, Ustad Abdul Haq, whoever, like, whoever uh, among, from among our uh, Assertive, uh, from among our teachers. It's like a title as well. Teacher, this person, teacher, that person, or Stead Sam. A, mu a muallim, I've seen sort of used more for like classical sciences, perhaps. You have a muallim in a, in a madrasa teaching the Quran. Um, even that same root is used in the hadith, isn't it? Where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ That the best of you are who teach the Quran, who learn the Quran. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ the best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and who teach it, right? So even with regards to the Qur'an, the Messenger of Allah himself used uh, this word um, for the Qur'an. So a muallim would be the, an appropriate term to use for the Qur'an. But even beyond that, like even for martial arts and stuff, like a sensei, um, I've seen, well, 
my main evidence, my main delil for this is actually Kung Fu Panda, which is perhaps not the most sahih of um, uh, the different uh, evidences we could give, but there is a Mu'allim Shifu in that, um, <laughs> in, the, in the Arabic version of Kung Fu Panda, for, um, yeah, Master Shifu, Mu'allim Shifu. Mudarris Shifu would, wouldn't quite sound right, really. Um, yes, so Mu'allim, perhaps more classical stuff. We tend to use mudarris, maybe for, for other types of education as well. Not, not that you can't use them kind of interchangeably. There's, there will be lots of crossover. But I'm just kind of giving you some, uh, ex some examples of nuance but between them, maybe. And I like bits of Spanish etymology in there as well, actually. The, the, the word usted as well exists in Spanish as well. Um, as like a formal way of saying you. Um, and probably comes from usted. Um, I mean, almost undoubtedly, I don't you know. I don't think there can be much explanation for that, especially when Spanish has its own um, own alternatives without using usted. It seems quite clear that usted, even even the Spanish pronunciation of the the, the de at the end, isn't really like a hard de. Usted, ustedes, it's, um, it seems undoubtable to me. Okay, so we've talked about some different words for teacher. What about student? Because sometimes you hear a talib. Um, I've even seen the word muta'allim, a learner, literally muta'allim, a learner. A talib. So talib means a student, but literally the verb talaba means to seek, right? And the active participle of that, a talib, a seeker, is kind of the generically, um, universally accepted word in all Arabic dialects to mean a student. The, the whole culture has accepted that a student is a seeker of something. Whereas in English, we, we don't really do that. We take our word for students from the word study, as if to be a student means to just do the studying. Whereas I, I like I like what exists in the um, Islamic and and Arab, um, you know, philosophy and outlook on education that the student is a talibul ilm, the student is a seeker of knowledge, uh, not just a daris, for example, not just a person, not just a studier, right? So um, there's also the word tilmiv, isn't there? Plural of which telamiv, tilmiv is another word for a student. Okay, I wanted to go through some other phrases that might be very useful um, from the teacher. Other things you might hear the teacher say. So, one that's very common, you'll hear ahsent, ahsent. Literally, you have done well. The verb ahsana, meaning to, um, to, um, yeah, to do well at something, right? To excel in something. Ahsenta, you have excelled. Ahsenti in the feminine, but you usually do waqf at the end of that. You, I don't think I've ever heard an Arabic speaker, Arabic speaking teacher say ahsenti. Or ahsanta, necessarily. Usually you end on that ahsant. But maybe if you're continuing, you'd say ahsanti fi a certain thing, or ahsanta in a certain thing. But ahsant, well done, ahsant. Um, you have excelled. Ahsant. Um, also in the whole classroom, you'll often hear, istemiru ilay, listen to me. Iste the verb istemi'a, yastemiru. Um, istemi' would be the imperative. Istemi'a. But because it's a classroom of people, istemiru in the plural, istemiru ilay, listen to me, istemiru ilay. Something I say to my my son when we're doing Quran is I'll say irfa' asaltak, raise your voice. Uh, Yusuf, uh, he has a very soft voice, bless him. Um, he's not a shouter at all. He's got a very soft, it's very calm, very gentle boy is Yusuf. Um, may Allah bless him and protect him and increase him in knowledge and any, any du'as you guys will make for him um, in his hifz of the Qur'an would be much appreciated yeah so I say to Yusuf irfa'a saltak raise your voice Yusuf irfa'a saltak yeah Yusuf um, yeah irfa'a raise very useful as well with your hand irfa'a yadak raise your hand irfa'a yadak well this imperative of course to a girl would be irfa'i um, if you're saying it um, to a girl um, I can't hear um, so I've actually only heard this in like Amiya context. Mish samir, mish samir in in Amiya. Probably an less to I am I am not a hearer. Less to samian. Or if we want to if we want to lengthen it, la astatiru and asma. I I am not able to to hear. Um, you you don't need to lengthen it out out that much. Mish samir. Yeah, that's also kind of that can be quite useful if. Someone says something to you and you didn't understand them, but you don't want to admit you didn't understand. You just want like you just want them to think you didn't hear. You know, <laughs> you just say "misseme," uh, I didn't hear. If you want to have another shot, because um, the problem with that though is I'll quite often say the same words again, right? 
um, which is a problem, you know, because if you didn't understand it the first time, quite likely you won't hear it, won't won't understand it the second time. So you might just need to say, Murphy Hemt, I, said, I didn't understand. Um, so anyway, that's another one as well, actually. Murphy Hemt, I didn't understand. Interestingly, in English, we tend to use, say, I, I, I don't understand. But in Arabic, they use the past tense for that. Fahimt, I understood. Or fahimtu, if you want to pronounce all of the vowels in it. You know, fahimtu, I understood. I understood. Or, or, or even, I, I quite like the passive participle of it. Mefhum, understood. Mefhum. You know, you can even say mefhum as a question. Mefhum, understood. And that's really useful as well. But yeah, with it's an interesting point, I think, like... Um, in, Eng in English, obviously, we use that in the present tense. They're like, I understand, I don't understand. But in Arabic, they use it in the past. They don't say, Ana fhem, or, you know, la fhem. They, uh, I mean, you can. Like, linguistically, it does make sense. It's just my, my feeling. I've actually been corrected on it before. I've been told it's better to use it in the past tense. I've understood. For him to. For him to. Or, 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 you know, for him to or me for him Very nice. Um, only a couple more left to go, inshallah. Very useful ones. So... What about questions? Okay, of course you need to ask questions in a lesson. Um, you'll often hear your ustaz or your muallim or your mudarris, um, whichever label they use, um, saying, Ay su'al, any question. Ay su'al, yes, any question. And you would say, Naam, indi su'al, yes, I have a question. Indi su'al, I have a question. Yeah, so a question is a su'al. And then I mentioned ma ma'ana. What does this thing mean? Naam, عندي سؤال. Yes, I have a question. Ma ma'ana mudarris. Mudarris يعني معلم. A teacher means a معلم. For example, okay. Um, yeah. So يعني is the word to say it means something. I mean يعني it means it means right. So you'd say ma ma'ana kutayib. Kutayib يعني كتاب صغير. Kutayib means a small book. Okay, that's what it means. Ya'ni is something. But the word ya'ni, as many of you will probably know, is kind of Arabic's um, kind of time filler. When you're thinking about something, and the way in English we say, um, uh, the way we do that in English, ya'ni is, is Arabic's way of doing that. And actually, in, in lots of um, uh, uh, curriculums, and lots of, um, um, not, not, not curriculums, but, um, you know, exam boards, exam syllabi, syllabi syllabuses, syllabi, whatever the plural is, um, you'll actually get more marks in their oral exam if you say yani, like, because it shows a, it shows in the Arabic paradigm a way of you doing something very natural for humans, us having kind of delays and thinking about what we're going to say, um, yani, you know, it's actually a good thing to do, and um, yeah, all, all languages have these, have these things, in English we say um and ah, and in Spanish they tend to say bueno, pues, like they, they they tend to do that in all languages and you know that's kind of interesting. Last word uh, of the day, probably the word wajibat. Wajibat meaning homework. Literally, the word wajib means compulsory, and wajibat is a yeah a word you, um, meaning homework. Generally, it's, it's not actually a plural, but the I mean the word is plural, but it means homework or homeworks or or things that are compulsory for you to hand in. Mom, one of my Arabic teachers, as a joke, used to call it al-farad. Used to kind of give it a... Um, although wajib is a fiqhi term as well, but farad definitely is. Um, as sort of a joke, he would call it the farad um, to try to invoke like a, it being religiously um, compulsory from a religious perspective. Uh, although it isn't. And, um, yeah, we, uh, we've just started our intensive program. We've done, we're doing a second cohort at the moment. Um, very well welcome, by the way, to our new students on the intensive program at Arabic Unlocked. Um, we just started this, and I, I was telling the students, you know, we have this, these you know, homework sheets. You've got um, answer sheets as well to mark your homework, and if there's anything you need to qu ask questions about, you can ask me. We've got this Telegram group and stuff as well. And, um, and they were like, well, when you say homework, what do you mean? Like, are you going to be you're going to be asking us to hand it in and stuff? It's not like that. <laughs> but but it's a good question, though, because lots of um, teachers, particularly those who are more traditionally leaning, um, like many of my Arabic teachers, when they say where you bet, even if they are setting where you bet for fully grown men in their 30s who have, you know, three wives and eight kids and, uh, and, a, and a real and a proper job. They might still be expecting you to do the word you bet. They might even tell you off for not doing the word you bet. So, um, so there you go. So, what's the word you bet for this lesson? 
Learn your words. Um, I think the word you bet, if I'd say anything, and maybe you can use this lesson as a stimulus for it, is um, get a good vocab routine going, inshallah. If you like flashcards, you can use digital ones like Anki or Quizlet. Or if you like the caveman version ones and ripping paper up and making manual cards, that's good too. But whatever you need to do to, to learn vocab more regularly, that's a very, very important part of learning the Arabic language. That's it for now. See you guys in the next one. Assalamu alaikum.